This presentation is an exploration of issues in 3D glasses for Trinidad and Tobago. I am Dr. Cherise Griffith Johns of the Department of Geomatics Engineering and Land Management in the Faculty of Engineering, UE St. Augustine. In this presentation, I will first discuss the need for cadastres and 3D cadastres in general, followed by the status of research internationally on 3D cadastres in legal, administrative, and technical aspects. This will be compared the status of 3D cadastral development in Trinidad and Tobago. And then we can discuss whether and how Trinidad and Tobago should advance in its 3D cadastral development and then conclude by drawing up a proposal for taking the 3D capacity development forward. Why on earth do we need 3D capacities? Capacities provide a record of physical limits of legal interest as well as textual information on who holds interest. They therefore legally support rights in land or property allow for efficient and secure transactions in land, and support land management decision-making. The graphical component of most cadastres have traditionally been in 2D, and this is proving to be no longer sufficient to record, visualize, and support the interests of landholders, and provide confidence in property transactions in an increasingly densified, primarily urban environment. Populations are moving from rural to urban environments, and then residential occupation is tending towards townhouses, condominiums, and apartments. And this needs a cadaster and primarily a treaty cadaster to be able to manage the rights. There's also a rights requirement for cadasters to support the access and allocation of all persons to their rights to land. The sustainable development goals have several indicators that relate to land rights and link the responsible and equitable allocation of land tenure to a decrease in poverty, the sustainability of food, the environmental sustainability, and many other benefits. Small island developing states such as Trinidad and Tobago require cadastres to equitably allocate the limited space they possess, especially since the usable space is even more limited. Populations are relatively dense and climate change is further reducing the available coastal space as a result of sea level rise, storm surge inundation, and coastal erosion. Research on 3D classes may be separated for the purpose of this discussion into three streams, legal, administrative, and technical. Legally, cadastral parcels have always been described as extending from the center of the earth to the infinite sky, which effectively makes them 3D. Practical considerations and land use restrictions, as well as international treaties, ensure that the whole of this described volume of space is not claimed, occupied, or used. So no, you cannot charge airplanes a fee for flying, flying over your house. Different legal systems exist internationally, which may uh, all allow for different rights, restrictions, and responsibility to exist and be enforced. Descriptions of rights and extents of those rights can be, and are in most instances described verbally, with the courts arbitrating over conflicting interpretations of the physical nature of those rights. Certain jurisdictions are very advanced towards the 3D situation in terms of the presence of legislation that supports precise definition and delineation of boundaries in all dimensions. Administratively, the state of the art in cadastral systems is the Land Administration Domain Model, which is an ISO standard model that provides a generic structure for all the rights in all the parcels in a jurisdiction. The form of the graphic structure is not prescriptive, but the model allows for 3D visualization of the individual volumetric parcel units. Technically, the ability to visualize and render the 3D cadastre 
has developed over time with the exponential growth of technology related to spatial information systems. Technological advances exist in the data acquisition process for the 3D cadaster. Data acquisition techniques that support the construction of a 3D cadaster include UAV and airplane mounted LiDAR and imagery data capture and terrestrial scanning. The cadastral index in Trinidad and Tobago has only a semi-legal function. But the one major legal hurdle, the development of a comprehensive 3D cadastral in Trinidad and Tobago, is the reality that many parcels are informal and are therefore not captured in the registration system nor the cadastral system. Why worry about these occupants since they are only squatters, you may ask? But no, they have legitimate rights from being in occupation over many, many years. And so these rights must be respected and recorded. The cadastral index serves administrative purpose, purposes as well. Currently, the cadastral is only in 2D and is incomplete and out of date. There are large voids where informal tenure is not accounted for. These areas can be a focus of discussion on the need for a 3D cadaster, as these areas are where the security of tenure that comes from registration in the 3D cadastral system provides the most social value. Linkages are also required between the different institutions that have cadastral parcel related data for administrative purposes. The technical aspects of 3D cadastra presents a challenge in Trinidad and Tobago as a result of the disparity in the application of technology in the country and its institutions. For high value condominiums and commercial construction, engineering building plans exist that can be used to construct a simple 3D cadastra. I've looked at this but there are many intangible boundaries that will not be captured by this and lead to more um, issues in the capturing of data. Take, for example, the center line of party walls. My book in this series also looked at existing LIDAR information for automated creation of the 3D cadaster, but this information that exists is not sufficiently dense and the data and new data will be expensive to acquire at a much higher specification. Cadastral systems, however, should not be just driven by the mere existence of technical possibility. But instead I think that the social need to secure tenure to all citizens as a human rights principle and the environmental need to manage the land to ensure sustainability of use, and also the economic need to develop the land as a resource using efficient systems should be key in the determination of how to go forward. We should therefore be looking at the um, linkages between the information systems and acquiring all the data and all the parcels. In conclusion, therefore, there should be a focus on supporting the legitimate tenure of the large proportion of citizens with informal tenure, which means providing legislation for including all tenures in the in 3D. This will support transactions in line and provide economic benefits to the country. The cadastral plans produced by the individual land surveyor should still provide the precise locations of tangible and intangible boundaries but the existing LIDAR data can be used to construct a 3D cadaster but that provides the topological structure of the cadastral fabric in an economic, economical fashion. Thank you very much for your attention to this topic. Thank you, Dr. Griffith Charles. Um, questions? Let's see if you have any questions. Yeah. Dr. Griffith Charles? 
Um, the person, well, this is a comment. They love the harmonization of many technologies, UAV, LIDAR, 3D scanning techniques. Um, question is, for 3D cadastres, what are the most common ways of communicating this kind of information? For example, 3D models in a software, physical 3D models or models projected on 2D for printing. Um, the 3D model, models in a software would be able to visualize the uh, um, software such as, I suppose, Arc, Arc Map or something like that, uh, as we speak of software, would be the most simple way of projecting it. Um, however, not everyone would be able to see and um, understand what they're visualizing. Because as I indicated, you would have uh, physical boundaries and then you would have those um, intangible boundaries such as center lines, um, ambulatory boundaries that are not so simple for people to be able to visualize when combined with these physical boundaries. Okay. Um, question, what are your views? on the qualitative challenges of practitioners who will be using 3D cadastres in Trinidad and Tobago. Are there additional ways of convincing them of its effectiveness versus conventional means such as a cost? Well, there would be some things that you would still have to have uh, physical surveys to perform. As I said in the Nate, in the instance of intangible boundaries where you're trying to place it with respect to sometimes physical boundaries. Um, so you would still need that aspect. You would still need practitioners to, to use those or to perform those surveys. Um, the cost, as you say, would be difficult to convince uh, institutions to develop this really cadaster because as I said, I've done the, the preliminary work on using the existing LIDAR data that we have, but that one was um, acquired cheaply, so there was only first return and last return, but to be able to accurately or precisely uh, create a 3D cadastre, you would need many more returns than that, which would drive up the cost considerably. Okay. Thank you. Um, Professor Ray, would you like to ask any questions? Uh, no, I don't have any question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Well, Dr. Charles for your really nice presentation and very good information. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. So, I'm moving to the next presentation, requesting uh, the, our next presenter, Dr. Kolapo Ali.